Hello, my name is Brandon Bryce. Welcome to The Veggie Gardener. So we're on the last of the three big soil amendments I want to cover. I was debating on adding this one because it's kind of a finicky one. Uh, there's a lot of options out there, but in the end I I decided we're gonna add it, it's manures. And I decided we're gonna add it because there's just a lot of people who have access to them. And so I want to explain as much as I can for what I understand about manures myself. Of course, we're gonna be covering manure. And if you find this information useful, please like, share, and subscribe. Mostly share, again, I'm just trying to reach as many people as I can as fast as I can. So for manures, in general, for all of them, you want to add them to a dormant garden, not an actively growing garden, for uh, sanitary reasons. For sanitary reasons, you also want to add them 120 days before harvesting anything. All right, so after that, those are the big generals. Uh, the ones that you're gonna have most access to are probably gonna be cow, chicken, and horse. So out of those, let's talk about them. Cow is gonna be your best, mainly because, so one, their nutrient content is balanced. Uh, they have a high nutrient content. Uh, they're the less, uh, sorry, out of all the livestock, they are the least medicated and they're gonna have less residual medications going through them. But they're also not picky eaters, and so their feed is going to be more likely less uh, applied with what's called agrochemicals, but I'm talking about herbicides. When, when people grow cattle feed, if they grow it for cows, they might not be using herbicides or as many herbicides. And We'll talk about horses and why the cows are different. But let's check out on chickens first. So chickens, most people will probably have access to chickens or at least some chicken manure. Chicken manure compared to cow manure is less balanced because it's just really high in nitrogen. So if you're gonna use chicken manure, oh wait, I should talk about why that's kind of bad. <laughs> Uh, chicken manure, being high in nitrogen, if you apply it uh, on too thick, you can actually burn your plants. Too much fertilizer. So chicken manure is good to mix in with stuff. Now here's the cool part. Most people don't have that many chickens. They probably have only like six in their backyard. So you'll probably be fine adding that to your, comp or to your garden but still it's probably good to mix it in with stuff so that it's not directly on the roots of your plants, such as. And let's see, notes. Really, there's not much else to talk about chicken manure. Um, use it lightly is all I can say and or mix it in well. And then let's go on to horses because there's horses everywhere. I mean, as I do for a living, I'm, I clean horse stalls. All right, so horses, their, their manure is the worst out of all the manures. It's low nutrient content. It has the highest rate of residual agrochemicals, herbicide, and they are the most, or at least I think, the most medicated of the livestock. So they're probably having residual medication going through them. All right. With that out of the way, those are all the cons and that makes it look terrible. But it's still very effective. So I don't want you to overlook it too fast. In fact, I'm gonna show you a source real quick. And this source is uh, interesting. So let me read it. Intensive culture, of, intensive culture of vegetables on the French system with a concise monthly calendar of operations, 1913. So, this um, manuscript, in essence, came out at the turn of the century when horses in France were a problem, in essence. They were a problem because they 
pooped everywhere and the streets were messy and they couldn't get rid of the poop. The farms also were too far away from the city and couldn't, um, well, here's a different, it's a different problem. The farms were too far of, away from the cities and it costs transportation. Whenever you transport something, it costs labor, time, resources. And so what they did was to solve both problems, the manure problem in the cities and the transportation cost of the produce from the farms, they, brought, they were able to bring the farms closer by using the manure for the farms. The problem with horse manure, because of the low nutrient content, they, you have to use quite a lot. Um, whenever they made a bed, they literally added close to a foot of manure. It's actually a cool system. I kind of want to talk about it a little bit more. What they did was they, it's, it's heavy labor, but they, they dug trenches, they threw the manure down, uh, they mixed it, old manure and new manure, and the manure, as it decomposes, as anything decomposes, it creates heat. And so they buried the manure and they planted their plants on top of the manure. The plants weren't getting access to the manure quite yet. The manure, as it decomposed, it create, he, created heat and it acted as a, uh, a seasonal extender. So not only did they solve these two problems, but they actually were able to extend their season through that. And then when the year ended, they'd unburied the manure, they'd take the manure and throw that off to the side, they'd put new manure down and they take this old manure now that's decomposed, composted, and they put that on top and that's where the plants go. And now it's great, it's rich, uh, rich soil for the plants. All right, so now there we go. That's my spiel on manure. It, I mean, I think that's super cool. And that's manure. So you probably have access to other types of manure. My only suggestion if you have access to like goat, sheep, or, or whatever, just don't, don't use, t um, don't rely on one source for all of your nutrients. Just keep uh, going back to the compost. A large ingredient list will be a better option for a balanced nutrient, uh, balanced nutrients. It'll cover a uh, larger ingredient list will cover all of your bases compared to if you're just going to use one. Don't use one. Always mix a little. That's, I, that's, yeah, that's my recommendation. Uh, cool. Right, there's one more thing I wanna share. So the other place I got some of this information on manures is, uh, no-till intensive veggie, vegetable culture um, by Brian O'Hara. I think the, the subtext is in, in essence, pesticide-free methods for restoring soil and growing nutrient-rich high-yield crops. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.